What's up, Happy Fabricators? It's good to be back. In this video, we're going to be building a DIY-friendly 27-inch by 44-inch welding slash fixture table for under $50. So for those across the pond, that is roughly 600 by 1100 millimeters. So before we get started with this build, I just kind of want to go over what my definition of a fixture table is and the properties that it has to possess to function as a fixture table. So for me, that's going to boil down to four separate properties or characteristics. Number one, it's got to be flat. If you're building something on it, more than likely you are using a fixture table to fabricate something and keep it to hold its position and being flat is very important. Number two is it's got to be rigid so that it stays flat. You can have a flat piece of material and as soon as you go to clamp or fixture things or start welding things, if it is not robust enough and not rigid, it will not maintain its tolerances or flatness. Number three, it's got to be somewhat modular. It's got to be able to adapt to the project because not every project that you're going to throw at it is going to be the same and you got to be able to adapt and function for multiple different projects. And number four, it's got to have some sort of way to integrate clamps and back stops to be able to do accurate and repetitive fixturing especially if you're building more than one thing. Now there are already multiple different companies out there that provide fixture tables that serve all these purposes very well. But the problem with it is they're not very budget friendly for a beginner. Such as this sort of flat table that I've been using for years. It's a good table, don't get me wrong, but this was a thousand dollar table. And for the beginner, that's not very achievable. So that got me thinking, what would fulfill all four of these criteria be DIY friendly, budget friendly, and accessible to the general public. And that's when I had this item. Yes, what we have here is a old craftsman 10 inch table saw with a cast iron top. This top is 27 inches wide by 44 inches long and an inch and a half thick of cast iron. It's got a machine surface. It is very rigid being an inch and a half thick steel. And later on in the video, you're gonna see how it will fulfill our final two criteria by being able to clamp things down to it and fixture things in a modular application. I picked this specific table up for $30. Now I got on Facebook Marketplace just yesterday again, and I found five of this specific model on there, all for under $150. One of them was $150, one of them was $70, one of them was $50 and one of them was free if you went and picked it up. So if you keep your eye out, they're out there and they're very affordable. So let's tear this thing down and see how good of a welding table we can make out of it. Now that we got this thing all broken down just in the spirit of DIY and budget friendliness, I want to recognize some of the raw materials that are left over from this. We've got a 110 one horsepower electric motor that's got a switch and a plug-in already wired in, very useful for future projects. We've got some quarter wall angle iron, some, I think it's probably about three eighths solid rod, and then just this bundle of mechanics. We've got tilting mechanics and I just kind of geek out about moving parts and stuff like that. But as I was disassembling this, I had another idea of potentially using these leftover parts to make another tool that you would use in the shop, such as a belt sander. All these components here you would need for to get started with a belt sander and you would be halfway there on your cost. You've got your motor with your drive pulleys, You've got your V-belt already. You've got your drive head bearing block built into this guy. This is a super head, heavy duty bearing block. Might even be able to incorporate using the tilt mechanism of all this for a table on a belt sander. We also have the stand that it was sitting on down there. So let me know in the comments if you think it is even possible or I should try to take on building a belt sander after we're done with this table project with these leftover components. And also, before we get too far into this, I wanna see how much this thing weighs, cause it is not light. Final verdict, looks like she's sitting at 98 pounds. So, that's a big chunk of steel. I think she'll do the job. So if you guys have watched any of my videos before, you know I swear by these silica strip discs. 
and we are going to use this to clean up our surface. These things are great because they will remove the rust and paint and schnizzle without actually gouging out the material. So link down in the description for these guys. Okay, so now that we got our top pretty well cleaned up here with our strip disc, we're gonna make sure that it is flat. So I've got a raw chunk of material here that I know is flat and I'm gonna put it part way on the main table, part way on one of the wings. And that side looks good, no gaps. And we're gonna do it part way on this side, the opposite side, and we have a little bit of a gap. So that tells us that this wing on this side is not sitting completely flat. So I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna loosen it up and see if we can't true it up. Okay, so now we got both these edges cleaned up. I'm going to try to get this guy lined back up. Now, if you don't have a flat table, because we're gonna make the assumption that you don't have a welding table to line this guy up on, what I'd recommend doing is getting yourself two pieces of square tube or something like that that you know is gonna be relatively straight and then take and stick them both underneath the table in the two areas that you're gonna be joining and probably on the edge preferably and then you can clamp them from the center section to the outer wing and know that you're gonna have a flat joint in between. So I'm gonna flip this guy around to the other orientation that it was and see if that's any straighter. And if it's not, I might have to go and get some thin shim stock to slide in there and adjust it. So you're gonna kinda of have to probably finesse with this as you tighten these down and make sure that everything is true and flat because that is the purpose of our fixture table. Now before I get these all bolted on, another thing I want to point out is that the bolt patterns on these things are all the same on both sides. So that really caters to our modular aspect of a fixture table. So if you get more of these wings down the road, you could either bolt them on like so and kind of have some expansion wings or if you got a whole nother table set up, you could bolt them side to side and then you'd have like a 50 something, I don't wanna do math right now, 50 something by 44 inch wide fixture table and that's a sizable table. So now that we've got this thing flattened out, we're gonna talk about the fourth aspect that a fixture table needs to fulfill and that is the ability to clamp stuff down. And what appealed to me with this style of table saw table is the open webbing. So we have built-in open webbing to be able to clamp things down. With this standard style weld clamp, we can pop in right underneath the webbing and snap it down just like so to be able to fix your stuff down. Now our material's nice and tight. We've got our angles cut out and we can weld this down on a nice flat surface. But wait, there's more. So speaking of built into this top, most of your table saws come with one of these thingamajiggers. So what you can do is we can slap this guy in here. We can take our other piece of material and either make yourself a stop block or use the edge of your table as reference. So let's just go six and a half inches, six and a half inches. Clamp that sucker down. Clamp that sucker down on this side. We've got our 45 degree piece. Slide it into place. And lock that down with another clamp. So now we've got everything locked down. We've got our angle determined that we want. And you are locked and loaded, ready to weld your part up. So now we got this part nailed out, we're gonna build some stop blocks for our fixture table. Stop blocks allow you to butt your material up against something for more consistent repetitive fixturing. And I got some ideas how we can incorporate some into this table. Our stops can be down here, out of the way, but then when we wanna fixture something up, we can just spin these little guys up, lock them down, take your piece of material, butt it up against your stops, take your other piece of material, lock in your miter, clamp it down, 
and you are good to go. And there we have it. We have a DIY budget friendly fixture table. Now I'm going to continue this build and I might even make it into a series and we are going to build legs for this thing and add on other fixturing elements. And I'm thinking this is gonna be my mobile welding table. So I might make it fold down and try to make it as versatile as I can that way. So make sure to subscribe so that you can see future videos. But overall, I think it turned out really good. It's a cast iron surface, so it's gonna be super rigid. It's really flat. It's very good sized. I mean, it's only about three inches shorter than my thousand dollar welding table here that's sitting on top of. And it's actually wider, so the square inches of them are actually very similar they're just configured slightly different i'm excited to make some legs for this thing and put it to use on a couple projects and see if this idea is worth its weight so let me know what you think in the comments if this is a good idea or not now what's to say you couldn't just use it the way it was and leave it on its table saw stand and use it that way now i would be have some concerns you'd want to make sure that you blew out all your sawdust so you don't have any fire risks there but you could totally do that I decided to break it down so that I could level it out. I could potentially use those other components for that other project we talked about earlier, and I could make it as light as possible. I realize this is a heavy piece of material, but in the event that I do make this into my mobile welding table, I wanna be able to have it fold up so that I can slide it in the back of my truck. And that stand did not cater to that very well. So once again, thanks for watching AM Custom Fab. If you wanna see more fabrication content, click the links that are gonna pop up here. If you wanna see how this build and others progress, hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you wouldn't mind. It's free to do so, and go build something, guys.